Hey everybody, it is Taylor of Summerdale Soul here. Today I'm working on my engine harness. This has been quite an endeavor. Uh, past me is kind of the worst. I have a real knack for writing shorthand and very sloppily. So that's starting to bite me in the butt. I'm also live here on Twitch as well. If you have any interest, follow my channel there. It's under the same as my Instagram. It's hard to search for, so I'll have to figure that out. But today we're going to be plugging and playing. So cross your fingers for me. I've already spilled my drink. <laughs> So I'll walk you through what I've done so far. Here is the throttle body being plugged back in. We have what looks like another miscellaneous throttle body plug, which goes kind of deep underneath those hoses there. I'll show you a little bit later. There's the thermostat plug. A lot of this is gonna be intuitive to those who maybe have worked a little bit more on some of these really tight knit, tough areas to reach. I have not. So I had to remind myself, hey, plug this in at the back of the engine, plug in the coils. All of these components that I've not really messed with and I'm now not exactly sure what they are. It was helpful to step away sometimes and realize I don't know what this is but I can minimize what's on here. Thankfully I did label the fuse box and after a little trial and error I figured out where everything went. Plug the blue link in first then the orange one. Sound advice but it does help if you don't plug it in upside down. I'm also going to go ahead and tell you I had to redo a lot of this. We'll talk about that later. So fun fact. The 1990 model has some plugs that match other connectors. What you're seeing me do here is incredibly wrong. I'll show you where these go a little bit later, but I thought it might be good to highlight this really unsettling bit of information. Alright, so I've picked up this whole separate unit, which previous me has not labeled a single thing on, because I just don't think I knew what any of this was to begin with. So, I have, in searching, discovered that this big old line that's on the passenger front is connected to this real thick boy, kind of close to this power unit box, connects to this guy. I think I want to feed this under. So, toward the tail end of this cut wire, worried about that later connects nicely. There we go. Oh, if this isn't foreshadowing, I don't know what is. So currently I'm trying to relocate this underneath that square tube to bring it under the square and over the front square to make sure I have clearance for my wiring tray. I'll show you in a little better detail. While I was in here, I figured, how much stuff do I actually have to get in this wiring tray? Oh my god, there's so much. Thankfully, a good chunk of this is really airbag stuff, which I'm not going to be using. Something, something, 30-year-old airbags. Not the best combo. So I wanted to mock up the wiring tray as well. I'm going to go ahead and say now that I've redone this, put this in first. It's really not that hard to navigate the wires through, especially once you've pared it down a bit. And it's going to save you a lot of trouble. I'll save that for the next video. Feels like a lot of stuff. So I went about trying to remove some of these brackets, trying to clear up some space so I could get all of these components within that actual wiring tray. So you'll see me trying to pull off the brackets on the blue components here. Just unplug those unless you plan to run an airbag. Can't imagine you would, but hey. Could not figure out what the heck these said. I was like, box? HD headlight something? Bax LA1? It's box LA12. This was plugged into something else, so it was a little bit of a wild goose chase. But those were connected to this golden boy. And I had it plugged into another connector as I'm discovering a few of these connectors have multiple matches on a first generation Miata, so be wary of that. <laughs> But I found them, mystery solved. I have my line running through over this square tube, underneath this square tube, so I can run these in this little pocket that the wiring tray has here. You can see where they'll feed through that. And I kind of wanted to mock it up before I attached it, thank goodness I did, because it's been a little trial and error with reconnecting everything. But so far, so good. God, it just sounds like I'm snapping every line on this thing. 
and I might be. So at this point, I'm trying to pull these lines out a little bit further, closer to the engine bay. Awesome. You can see that rubber circular component. And here are all the parts I've removed that involve the airbag. I feel like I'm cracking some crab legs. I want to go back to the beach. Ow! Yeah, that's about what happens anyway. After cracking those legs, I plugged in some components that plugged in nicely just below the steering column. I'm really now realizing how much work I did and had to redo after not putting my wiring tray in first. Just do it. Just do it. It can be done, but it is such a wrestle. It's a squeeze, but don't forget this little clip just underneath that steering component. Okay, it's so wild and this is gonna sound crazy, but I keep like smelling the wiring harness and it smells <laughs> like I'm not seeking it out. I'm not like, but I keep getting whiffs of it and it smells exactly like how the car smelled on the first day I bought it. Like it is just instant memory lane. Like remember the feeling, this is my Miata. I think the battery's gonna die, but it's my Miata. Here we are. So at this point, I wanted to see where my gauge pod was going to roughly be. So I'm trying to connect this to see exactly where my cluster is going to sit so I can get the length required on the rest of that wiring harness to plug it in. All right, I want some props for this because this build really has been a one woman effort. And I think this really shows some of those quirks where it's really nice to have a second set of hands, but dang it, you can do it. You can do it. That or I'm just stubborn. Okay, don't judge me. I started to thread this bolt, but it's very long and it's a lock bolt, so I just wanted to clamp this in place. After all that effort, I hit truly peak laziness. So at this point, I'm trying to see exactly how much slack I'm going to need to plug this in to the cluster. And unfortunately, as I've said before, all of this is a moot effort. But, you know. All right, fine, it was good to mock it up, so this was helpful, but I don't want to send you down the wrong path of not just putting in your wiring tray. All that to say, this gave me a good idea to let me know how much slack I was gonna need, and clearly I can get this plugged in. Well, clearly trial and error was the theme of this video for y'all today, because I found out my stock radiator fans are far too thick, so I'm gonna be on the hunt for some aftermarket ones. So for now, these come out. I think this is the driver's speaker here. That's what that's marked as. And this is the long rat tail that runs out back. So as far as I could tell, that was pretty much everything that got this harness connected. Again, I did have to do this basically over again. Not entirely, but needed to put the wiring tray in first. I think I'm sorted now, but that video is to come. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.